It is good to be back. I can actually breathe now after I just had my nose surgery and I haven't been putting out videos, so I apologize for that. I am back. Good day and welcome to today's episode of the podcast. This is episode 75 and I'm going to be talking about staying on track, staying disciplined, losing motivation. The reason why I want to talk about all this is because I recently had a girl from I can't remember where she's from, but she's a first year student. She messaged me a couple of months ago, probably at the start of the year, so maybe eight months ago, saying that she wasn't able to stay on track. She was losing motivation and just all in all feeling like architecture wasn't for her. And deep down, she loves being creative. She loves doing the things she does with architecture. She just didn't have that fire or that passion for it. And I noticed that this is something that um, not just Alex, who is the person experiencing this ex was experiencing, but this is something that a lot of architecture students come across and it's something that I really wanted to tackle on a massive scale. Oops. Alex then messaged me just a couple of days ago saying that um, she was doing really well. She uh, kind of picked herself up after I had a, a big chat to her over email and um, she was getting good grades. She was enjoying the work she was doing, but now she's in this kind of pit of getting stuck again and she's just demotivated, lost interest in it. And it seems like to me, the main theme of this is that it comes in cycles. So, you know, motivation comes in cycles is what I mean by that. That some days we're fired up and this kind of usually builds over time and it builds and builds and builds. But then that motivation actually um, then starts to chip away and it comes and goes and comes and goes. I'm first of all just going to read out what I sent to Alex because I think it will be helpful for everyone else to know. Alex messaged me saying that right now I'm in the same situation as back in January. Um, so this is my last year in high school actually, sorry, not first year of architecture, but she sent a whole paragraph saying, um, explaining the situation, why she's not motivated at the moment. And I said, so why don't you like to study? What do you think is the cause? And again, she says, I don't know. I just don't feel to study, even though I know it's important and that I will regret, which I do every time before tests, but then I repeat. In so she knows it's important to study, but she just can't find that motivation to do it. And so my response to this was that I said, I feel like it would be a good idea to take a day off. Go to the beach or a place you like and bring some paper and a pen. Write down what got you into architecture in the first place. I think that's really important. Write down where you're going and what you have to do to get there. So to kind of have a vision of where you're going and help that pull you and help you help that drive you towards that goal. I said, really try visualize who you want to be the things in life you want and how architecture is the vessel to get you there. How, where does architecture play its role in getting to who you want to be? And this is hard because a lot of people don't know who they want to be. They don't know what stands for them in the future. But to understand this stuff, it's like, it's so much easier to get what you want when you can define what it is that you want. So what I'm saying is to take a day off and figure these things out, figure it, figure it out, what it is that you want out of life. What do you want from architecture? What do you want from um, studying? So I continue to say that sometimes it's just a matter of getting stuck because you have no vision of why you started in the first place. A lot of us just choose to do architecture because it's this, you know, it seems like it's this well-respected profession or career that's good paying and it's, um, you know, giving, you know, it's creating something that's useful for the community. And I said, because we don't have this vision of why we first started, the work becomes mundane because it's got no meaning. But once you create that fire again and you find the meaning, that the meaning towards why you're doing this, your purpose for studying architecture or becoming an architect, then it becomes easy. I said, I think you'll be just fine. Uh, motivation comes in waves. That's because it's a habit. Motivation is a habit. It's not something that you can just um, try and build up over a couple of days and then you're going to be consistently motivated. Nah, that's not how it works. It's got to be consistently fueled over time and refined and come back to and um, continued to be worked on over time. And I told her that the way that to do this is that um, sometimes you just have to keep fueling that habit by thinking back to your goals consistently and constantly remind yourself why you started. And I really want this to be something practical that you can take away. I seriously mean it to take a day off. Don't go watching Netflix or anything. Just go to a quiet place somewhere by yourself and figure this shit out because it's extremely important to figure this out for yourself. Once you know why you're studying architecture or what you want from architecture, why you want to be an architect and how it's going to act as a vessel to get you to where you want to be, 
that's when you're going to be consistently motivated and you're going to be fired up to want to study, to want to learn because you've got a meaning for doing so. Motivation just comes from passion. If you don't have passion, you're not going to be motivated. You're not going to be driven to want to get better at what you're doing. It's not about trying to trick yourself into being motivated. It's about seriously considering why you're doing this and then fueling that. You know, there are all these productivity hacks you can do or these tricks that um, to keep you on task and time management and whatnot. But it really just comes down to why you're doing it if you're not passionate for it then it's going to be so much harder to drive towards that goal it's like trying to push a boulder up a hill but once you've got a, that goal in your mind you've got a vision of the future of why you're doing what you're doing then that vision helps pull you it's just so much easier and so if you're someone like alex who struggles to stay motivated or struggles to find that passion take a day off go to the beach or something, bring some paper and a pen, write down your thoughts, write down where you want to be, write down your goals, and that's really gonna help drive you and continue to fuel your persistent actions to get you there. If you guys have any ideas on how you can get unstuck from this situation and what you guys do to beat this, I guess, procrastination or this lack of ambition, this lack of motivation, let us know down in the comments below. What do you do in this situation? Do you go to the beach and bring some paper and pen and write down your goals do you go for a hike or something what do you do um because it's really good to talk about this stuff except most people are going to watch this video and then take no action from it but if we can actually put down a list of things that people can do and take action on to get unstuck then that's going to be extremely helpful and that's what i want from this video so thank you guys so much for watching I'm good to be back. I haven't been that energetic this video with my sinuses playing up and I can't really talk properly. Um, so hopefully in the next videos they're going to be a bit more fiery. So um, yeah, I just wanted to tackle that question. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already subscribed and liked the video, please go and do that. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.